let's start, uh, I think Angela is the, is this Angela's? Yeah, this is Angela. Hey, do you hear this afternoon? I think you are. So let's go ahead and look at your image. Uh, what we'll do with, uh, is like we've been doing the last couple of weeks, I'll ask for uh, your theme. Uh, is it take, make, or create? Uh, and uh, what rule are you employing? I thought there was four things. Oh, and, yeah, that was four things. It was theme. I'll tell you, once we've slept, we can't remember. Jack, title. Theme, oh, and title, title. Thank you very much. And you did yeah. your pilot. And that you title it, and the reason I'm giving you days off. Yeah, the reason. <laughs> watch out, Julie. The reason I ask for title is to see if you can tie your title to your image. But it's just something. It's just another kind of mental exercise uh, to kind of tie your image to uh, a title of some sort. So, okay, Ad, are you there? Instead of going through this sheet, I'm having a hard time actually reading this on the screen. Well, I could pull it up a little bit. But, yeah, but, I'm, I'm here. Okay, and uh, so what I'd like to do is you kind of walk us through those four things. So theme, take, make, create, rule, and is there, is there a title involved? Okay, let's see, didn't move forward. Okay. There we go. Okay, got your image. Uh, okay, um, I titled, it's, uh, um, started out as flower photography, but I caught the butterfly that day too. Okay. Um, I, I titled it Black Butterfly, and okay. um, the, 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 that's the theme in the title. It's a take. Okay. I haven't gotten to where I'm, I'm creating yet. Okay. And then your and rule? The rule of thirds. Okay, perfect there. All right, so uh, this falls into the bucket of floor or flower photography. Do we have one that covers nature? And maybe we need to expand that category so we could include something like that. Because otherwise, this is more about what the butterfly than it is about the flower. But I understand how you tie exactly. it to, to that uh, thing. So what maybe we'll expand yeah. that category is nature and flowers or nature photography. I yeah. think you're right. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. So that'll but I didn't that. do anything to the photo to simplify it. Um, I'm still battling with Photoshop and trying to learn different things. Yeah. I'm going to tap one of you all one this evening. Yeah, Photoshop can be a battle. <laughs> it definitely can be a battle. Yeah. Right there. And I see you're able to get your uh, your tagline in there. Use, and you're on a PC, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so you, and, uh, and there's a specific way you have to get all this these symbols in there with a the with a, with a, with a, with a Well, I got, I got that in the framing down path. So now okay. I got to learn how to, something you were showing us this morning where you took the little girl and, you know, do certain, you know, tag certain parts of it. See, yeah. I'm trying to do that now. Okay, all right. And that's the next level up then. You go back to the selection process. Uh, thanks, capture nice tight frame, which is typically the way I shoot and the way I like to see an image. Uh, there's nothing extraneous left or uh, top right, left or bottom that should not be in there. Uh, kind of curious as to why you got your, your tagline in black. Uh, and can I go back to standards and, and anything you want to deviate from the standard is totally up to you and it's totally acceptable. So why did you use black as a, a mostly you see these taglines are in either in white or some type of gray or so, but why would, why did you choose black? No, 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 no reasons, no specific reason. Um, I put a tagline in and changed the color according to what's going on or okay. what I think will show up. Okay, all right, that works there as well. Now, uh, white would also go up down there as well, uh, but that works as well. Uh, I thought maybe you're going to tie it to the black bevel edge, the extra edge you got around it. No, no that's so. if, 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 the, if red was prominent in there and I needed the red to stand out above some other color in the picture, I would have used red. Okay, so, and it's obvious that you know how to change the color then. So you select it, go to Oh, the yeah, color. I, I know how to do that. that. Okay, good. So you're learning. I mean, is uh, and that's kind I'm of learning. Cool. That's kind yes. of cool. All right. Any uh, questions, Ad, regarding her image? Uh, nice very image. clear photograph. Very, very nice. Very nice. That's a good job. Yeah. Okay. Nice good job. job. All right. Let's go to the next one. Let's see who's up next. This is AJ, Annie, Annie, are you here? Annie Jackson. Yes, I'm here. Okay. All right. Uh, abstract photography, psychedelic. 
And uh, this is, uh, I think uh, you mentioned that maybe you're learning something new. Let's see if I can oh, that's this. pretty. That's pretty. Something's Very pretty. pretty. Yeah, this is uh, abstract, and that we did include a button to include abstract. How do we put that abstract and surrealist? I think is what we did here. Yeah. Uh, so uh, theme is abstract. So uh, go ahead and take us through it if you would. Take, make, create, little title, and then we can discuss it. Okay. Right. As you said, the theme is abstract photography. The title is psychedelic. The rule is rule number nine: fill the frame, and it's a create. Okay. All right. Uh, I like the way you play to, uh, brought that rule. Fill the frame. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. definitely, definitely he filled the frame. You yeah, have that right off of the bat. Yeah. Yeah. How to so, do that? Yeah, how to do it. Well, I, I use the YouTube that uh and I met strictly by that YouTube that uh um <laughs> Good. I can, that Ramona gave us. The abstract yeah. and Bob has it in the team room. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I have to try that. Yes, yeah, so that, that video is actually in the team room. Uh, so if you want to go back and look at uh, any of you who want to go back into the team, there's a ton of content in the team room. Uh, if you want to go back and view those from time to time, it's, they, it, it is definitely there. That's so, beautiful. Yeah. So Very now, nice. um, and this is, uh, and this is in from, uh, Ramona, RB helps you guys with this. I think there's another sense actually as well. So I think, uh, it's, it's really beautiful image. Really yes, nice. Nice. Right there. It makes, me kind of, makes me kind of want to go and do abstract. Although I mean, I'm okay. going to do this type of stuff here. Although, uh, and it's in the team. I'd like to look at myself as well. Nice job. Nice yeah, job. Very, very nice. nice. Yep. Very nice. Okay. okay. And uh, all right. Other, let's go to the next one. Then I think next up is Annie. I don't. Annie, you got a question to Annie? Yes, yes. Annie. Hi, this is Sharon. What uh, was it originally? Um, originally, it was a piece of African material. Oh, oh. that is. That's a beautiful shot. Yeah. 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 Nice of it. Okay. And you know what would have been nice is to see the before and the after when you're doing these. Right. So, yeah, because I'll see where you came from, how you got there. But that's it's very cool. Very nice. Yeah. Now let's go to the next one. This is uh, this is Barrington. Barrington's got a butterfly as well. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. Barrington. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Nice, nice nice clarity. Nice colors and what have you in here on Barrington. Yes, I I am going to, I am still on the side of where Annie was. It's a take. Okay. And um, what is, I don't, I don't know the other ones, but... <laughs> Uh, take uh, and the rule, what's your rule that you're using and what's your theme? Um, butterfly and a flower. Okay, so we just expanded the flower category to include nature. So this is part of nature. We're all nature flower flower. And I'll update that in the uh, in the uh, theme uh, box so you'll be able to see exactly when you place these things here. Uh, and again, uh, not to be restrictive, uh, I'm trying to open up that theme bucket so you can basically kind of interpret that as you like, as long as it kind of fits that, that bucket there. So this is nature and flowers, and that's uh, our new theme will be nature and flowers. Uh, well, that particular bucket. So well, we were, I, I was working around the uh, pattern that you showed us last week, you know, to go between black and yellow and you know the colors that you were showing oh so okay I can, I can. So, okay uh now your mat is a little thin uh oops sorry about that uh and white area that you is that intentional do you want just a thin mat or normally this mat if we're doing this and, and all these are things that we're doing to to the edge in terms of putting the mat around it is kind of fortifying or reinforcing uh, your ability to use Photoshop. Mm -hmm. uh, so is there a particular reason you went to a thinner mat versus a, and a, and a, and a frame that looks almost the same size? Uh, no, I, you know, be honest with you, when I was in there, you know, I'm just like you, when I'm going into these, I would call them typical department, it kind of, <laughs> with my photograph in there, I'm always here. Typical. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> so I come up with because I think fig I figured out okay if I go one or two, yeah, 
you know, I so that's how I do it. And then, you know, I don't want to go up because if I go up, then I'm going to have more problem in there. Okay. So I just, I just being take, cautious for that. I just take what I get. Okay. All right. Okay. But there's a way to determine the size of that, you know, by changing the proportions and that uh, canvas sizing uh, uh, tool that we use. Okay. There's another tool in there called uh, the healing, uh, spot healing brush. You can use that to clean up some of the spots uh, here as well. Yes. Uh, just, just give me a pause. I tried to use that healing brush. Yes. Yeah. I pull it, I pull it over from where it was, bring it into the picture, something I want to cut off. Yeah. It comes over there and it, and I circle the, the, the place and it just stay there and just keep moving, just trickling around, but nothing happens. Okay, use the spot healing brush. There's two brushes in there. One's called a healing brush where you actually have to sample the, the area that you want to uh, 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 heal with. Or you can use a spot healing brush, which has a content aware function in it. And that will uh, that's the one you should be using, not the healing brush, the spot healing brush. And they, they, okay. they work alike, but they're, they're totally different, but they work alike. Um, okay. You want the spot healing brush, and that'll sense what it'll do is sense the the uh, irregularity of the pixels around it, and it'll say, "Oh, that's white. The rest of it is green," and it'll take that right out for you. Okay. Whereas, whereas the healing brush, you have to tell it what to put here because you can you can sample another. Area. It works almost like the clone stamp, but you have to uh, sample another area to tell it what to put there. But it's a nice capture there. I like what you did. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nice. All right. Questions to Felix. I'm sorry to our uh, uh, Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice All right. Let's go to the next thing. And this is from BG Richards, Billy G. Uh, where is he? Is I'm here. here. Okay. All right. And I'll just uh, go to the image. There's your write up. Can I mirrorless lens one? Okay. We see. Okay. Here we go. We got a. Uh, looks like uh, they turned the pot, the pool. They turned the faucet. The faucet. They turned the you call it the fountain. The fountain. Oh, oh, my God. God. Yeah, down in Centennial Park. You remember last time we were there, they were dead out. Nobody was doing anything. I'm glad to see they're on now. Right. Well, my theme is the urban life people, and uh, my title is Fun in the Water. It's the rule of thirds. That's the young lady right there in the front. Yep. Okay. And uh, it's a take. And it's to take. Okay, basically, I'll take that. All right. Very good. All right. Is this too large on the screen? I'm trying to get it. Yeah, that, that's that there is pretty go. Okay, there we go. Can we see it okay there? Yeah. Just trying to make sure everybody can see yeah. it okay. Nice capture. Nice action. Nice activity. Yeah. Tell me something. If you were taking that picture and you was trying to focus, your focusing yeah. would because the water is uh, closer to you. Yeah. When you have a problem trying to uh, focus on the kids, yeah, you would actually would because this little this little patch of water here, right? Yeah, it looks a little, like it's a little bit sharper. Yeah, uh, it looks a little, a little bit sharper. And I was going to say this is actually a little softer back here in the back here. But what I would do is try to put that uh, uh, what do you call it the uh, focal point right on her face somewhere. Now you're shooting with a mirrorless camera, so right. this is it's a good test for that eye autofocus they've got going on in the mirrorless cameras. Uh, yeah, because this is much sharper right here. But you still have system. water coming up between her and the camera. See? Yeah. yeah. You know, right. So it may have interfered with it, but I would try to put that focal point there. Is, is what I would try to do with it. Yeah, that's see how, that, how that worked out. But uh, but it works out okay. I mean, you you got some you got some movement, a little bit of movement from her. I don't know what your shift speed. Uh, oh yeah, I did look at this one. This is uh, you're using a long lens. I think a 100 to 400. Is that correct? Right, that's correct because of the distance I was from them. Oh, yeah, and, and I was and I uh, was uh, indicated. I mean, when I because I looked at this, why is it soft? And I looked at the shutter speed and the lens. And I think you're somewhere like around 1 25th of a second or something like that. Maybe yeah. you weren't as high as 200 of a second. Uh, and that may have uh, caused a little bit of an issue with her movement. That's okay. Uh, but in terms of the focal point or sharpness, uh, I would try to put that autofocus, I autofocus right here and let and see what it would do. Because it did hit the water. Okay, you're sharp down here. This kid's ear is nice and sharp down here in the corner. Uh, so it did hit that okay, 
Uh, but the, uh, a lot of it may be due to the long lens and the low shutter speed, the long lens and the low shutter speed. Uh, but it's a nice capture, a nice, uh, nice spontaneous capture. It works out still well. Nice shot. Yeah. Nice shot, Billy. Very, very nice. Thank Thank Billy, where, where did you put your focal point? On her face. Okay. On her, it was, the focal point was actually on, yeah, basically on her face. But the only problem was, like I said, the water kept coming up and, yeah, and it, it, it moved it. the water, you know. Yeah, kept, yeah. Yeah. It was kind of confusing the focus there. When yeah, it. right. Yeah. yeah. Billy, did you, have, did you have it set for people? Uh, the no. uh, focus was it set for people is what he's asking. No, I didn't set it on people. Okay. Okay. All right, and that could be uh, part of it, but that's all part of learning that mirrorless system. They got all of them got new new uh, systems there, and uh, you have to learn these particular systems. Like you have to learn your metering system, you have to learn your autofocus system as well. <coughs> so I autofocus and uh, select people. Now they've got a grouping in some of these cameras that says uh, uh, it says I it says uh, I forget what it says, but it. It's almost automatic where it includes everything. And uh, that, that may not be one that, that you want to try to use because it encompasses everything. I think Nikon system is like that. Uh, I autofocus plus, and it gets it, it covers a lot of other also Bob. I didn't use autofocus, I was focusing manually. Oh, that, that might be auto tool. that might be, a, that see, might be your issue auto, right there. <laughs> but see, autofocus would have been even worse because it really would have been jumping around. Yeah, well, see, your autofocus should track it though. It should track once it locks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but manual focus in this scenario is really tough, man. It was really, tough. Yeah, manual focusing this thing will be really tough. You did an excellent job just to be manual yeah. focusing it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. pretty good. It's very good. Yeah. Nice, nice colors. Yeah, and they are pretty. I like the colors nice. as well. The whole whole scene, the whole activity is going is very nice there. Uh, use your, your cleanup uh, tool and get rid of that little uh, piece of debris or artifact in the lower left hand corner. It's a nice capture, other than that. So go ahead and do it. You got a nice image there. This should be one that's in your book if you plan on doing a book. Put that aside as a book. Bob, uh, okay. I got <laughs> I spent a whole day down there. I have all kinds of pictures of uh, these kids, but also over in Vine City. Vine City has that park over there, and they have water coming up also. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So this one, I chose this one because of the color. All right. Very nice. Okay. Well, there's you can have a theme for your book. Water. Uh, kids at water. A uh, water. What is it? Water rocket. Waterfall. <laughs> Waterfalls. You might have a theme for your book then, if you got a bunch of these. Um, yeah. And you can. And that's the other thing. You can do. Uh, you can do. Uh, you can do several books. And they can be on several different themes. So if you got uh, if you got a knack for capturing kids play on the playground and doing stuff like that, you, you call your book kids and just uh, take pictures of what kids do. So that's cool. Nice capture, man. Nice capture. Really pretty color. Uh, questions to BR before we move on? Job. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next one here. And this is from Cal. Cal Lindsay. Short answer. Let's go right directly into it. And this is uh. Uh, this one's called, uh, this is your theme, uh, take, make, or create, rule, and the title. So what's your theme on this one, Cal? Okay, my theme was um, uh, Cretan Pottery. I'm sorry, say again? Cretan Pottery from Cretan Greece. Pottery. Okay, that's your title, Cretan yeah. Pottery. Okay. And my theme was... Um, I got it written down here. Uh, vintage. Vintage. Okay. Vintage falls into the same bucket there. Okay. All right. And the rule that you're using? I use rule one and three. Okay. One is going to be rule of thirds. Three is going to be foreground interest and debt. Okay. All right. Okay. And then uh, did we miss anything? Rule title. It was a print. It was a uh, full color, okay. HDR, and it's also stacked. Um, okay, so you did some work on it. Okay, take, make, or create. Yes. Where were you there? That's to create. Okay, and tell us why it's a create. Looks like, uh, and I'm and I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Looks like a, just a straight out capture to me. So why is this a, this a create? Well, I put the uh, the um, 
the background sky in. Okay, all right. And uh, I, I I darken the background a little bit, you know. Um, okay. In 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 my um in my masking, and uh, a couple of others I crop I cropped it, but the crop is not create. Uh, crop is and that's about all, you know. It just. Okay, I was just trying to get to how you got to create out of it. Because it looks like you just set it down on the table. It looks, this looks like a window in the background, but you actually put that back there. What is this band here uh, back here that's got a kind of a... That a band up? is supposedly um, when, um, when sometimes when the sky is, the sun is low and there's water, it reflects on the water from the sky. It, it, the, the sky is, that's the sky reflecting in the water. Okay, all right. I mean, there's a very distinct opaque looking band here. I, didn't, I thought maybe that was part of your backdrop or something before you put the sky replacement in. Well, there was a backdrop there, yes. But um, I, 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 I settled in as a reflection, sky reflection. Okay, all right, let's go. All right, and then your, your, your mat uh, is a, got a maroon on one edge and then they're white. And I assume that the, the maroon color is coming from this uh, area inside the vase itself, the vase vase. Whatever. Yes, that, that, that correct, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So that, I mean, that indicates that you know how to change the color palette. You know, you got a color palette in Photoshop, got those, those, two, those two colors here, and you have to be a little bit proficient in how to change those. And it looks like you're, you're very, doing very good at, at that. Uh, uh, I think you answered all the questions. So, and uh, the rule number three, foreground interest, and this is your depth as you're going through. So foreground interest and depth, okay? And that's what we got. We see rule of thirds, rule of thirds pops up all right, all right away. Uh, so I, if I were gonna call it anything, I'd just call it rule of thirds, but you do have foreground interest and depth. There's some, uh, there's some there's an image here and there's uh, things that go on that run you through the background to give you the depth. Nice piece of work, man. Nice piece of work, yeah. Thank you. So, okay. As, and again, and the vase is real clear. Yeah, I like the vase. Yeah. 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 Well, if you, if you, if he could blow it up, you would see, you could really see the detail in that vase. Okay. Yeah, I got, I'm looking at a lot of stuff on it. Yeah. And there's some, I see, I missed this writing. It's like Greek writing, perhaps. Is this Greek? Yes, Greek writing. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's a nice, uh, nice, very nice stuff. Uh, Good yeah, job. So, yeah, nice art, a nice item to a nice piece of inventory or item to have yes. as well. Wow. You know, like that. Now, is this something you got when you were traveling, perhaps, or is yeah, some? Yes, it yes it was. I was in uh in Greece and we um we saw that in a little uh, antique shop. Yeah, okay. and we picked it up. <laughs> okay, very nice. Yeah, very nice artifact. Very nice. nice. My wife, my wife said, "You better get it back in the cabin before you break it." <laughs> <laughs> so don't be playing around. Huh? <laughs> I'm you'll, be dead, you, yeah. you'll be dead meat after that. Yeah, there you go. All right. All right. Uh, any other questions or Cal before we go on to the next one? Good job. It's, no, good, job. Uh, that, that, good job, Cal. Thank you. That looks Thank like you. it was a, um, a horn she was blowing. Okay. Probably could, could have been there. All right. This is uh, from Cynthia, another piece of abstract photography. She's got a title. Twist of color, and here we go. That's nice. Okay, very, very oh, nice. Yeah. Real nice. Yeah. Uh, Twist of here. color is Yes, beautiful. I'm here. Okay, and you want to tell us about it? I love the rich color. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. It falls under surrealism. It's uh, abstract art. The title is a twist of color. It's a create, and the rule is fill the frame and color combinations that we You're about to be sued. Who's about to be sued? I'm about to be sued. <laughs> Let me just mute Diane. Oh, <laughs> Let me just, she's having a conversation. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, and you gave us all the thing, you know, abstract, uh, surrealism, take, make, or create, options to create. Uh, okay. Rule was filled with... Uh, rules fill the frame. Fill the and, frame and color combinations that work. And the color combinations that work. Okay. And what is that, Cynthia? Yeah, so there's the next Thank question. You. Okay, and the question, uh, I think, to asking, what is that, uh, the object? 
Well, the thing of it is, uh, uh, I don't want to give you what the object is. What you okay. need to do is, is go, when Bob gave us some ideas on how to uh, create abstracts, he showed us how to go to the website and get different things. Um, with me, I like color. So what I used was blue, green, red, and blue, something in that you will see it. You just take a picture of it and you use the video that Ramona gave us and just go to work and have fun. Okay, all right then, yeah. And again, that uh, video is still in the team room out there. It's still in the team room. So, Very uh, nice, I uh, like it. Check that, yeah, that's a nice, nice piece of work. Now, this week I noticed that you did not use your beveled edge. You were doing a lot with the beveled edges or the color edges around it. You just got, this is very, uh, I won't say I won't say very traditional, but uh, you got the standard black mat, uh, black frame, white mat, and then there's no edge around it. I mean, you got plenty of coloring here. You could have used it as an accent color. Is there any reason that you did not? And I'm just asking the question. Yes, I did do that at first, but then to me, it was taken away from the art. Okay. So I wanted the focus to be on the art. So that's why I went with the white. Okay, all right. That was uh, that's kind of where I thought you were. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's there's uh, there's time to experiment. And there's time when you just you go into an image and you look at it and says, oh, okay, this works. This doesn't work, and what have you. But this works very well. I like that white mat around it with no other uh, extension on it. And so it comes off comes across as very, very, uh, uh, very, very, very refined. Refined is what it looks like to me. All right, and one thing I would to, like to say before I go on, Bob, is that when doing the abstract art, when you take a photo or something, this is what your natural eye will see. But when you go to an abstract, your eye is not, it's not what you see, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, when you create an abstract art. Yeah, I'm with you. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, I totally. Yeah. I've been <laughs> in school of abstract. Yeah. He, he said but totally. Yeah, totally, it did to me. Well, yeah. That's very beautiful. That's yeah, very that's beautiful. That's yeah. great. Thank you. Colors actually and pop. Thank you for for sharing that video. Okay, where's our beast here this afternoon? Oh, yes, my pleasure. It. They're all very a lot of fun, right, Cynthia and Annie? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm A lot of fun. Okay. Uh, I said, and uh, let's go next one here. Then let's see what we got. And this is uh, this is Mr. Felix. I won't read the sheet here, but we got it here. Oh, right, here we go. And uh, Felix, uh, theme, uh, take, make, create, rule, and title. So and rule is rule of third. Okay, so I guess this image yep, here. That's okay. step right there. Okay, starting here with that. Second. And the okay. theme uh, is flower. Okay, we're under the flower bucket. Yep. Yeah. And uh, the name of it is a peace plant flower. Okay, peace plant flower. And then you got your. It's a take. Take. Okay, for basically, basically a take there. Uh, so, so, what is this back here? Is this some kind of feather on the outside? That's uh, this... another, uh, like a palm tree, like. Okay, so this is, is that inside? It looks like it's yeah. in some type of a box or something, is it? It's, it's right outside of it. Oh, okay, so on the outside of it. So yeah, this yeah. done in a light box, maybe? No, that's outside okay. of my, in my uh, sunroom. Oh, okay, all right, now just this green palette back, how'd you get it all green? The green palette is, is a piece of uh, uh, poster board. Okay. A poster so board. Poster board, okay. All yep, right. and I folded it in the corner, and right. bingo, that's what I get. Oh, okay, I'm with you now. I see what you're getting. So this is a, a shot. The plant is here. There's a glass behind that. Okay, all right. And I took a poster board, folded it, and mm -hmm. I stuck it in the corner so that I covered the whole flower, the whole pot, pot with the plant in it, and I shot it. Okay, all right. And, and the outside it. of the glass, there's the next plant out there. So it came through. Okay, I've got you. Okay, so it looks like a, it looks like a silhouette or something that was on the outside there as well. Okay. It is a silhouette of a plant. Okay, all right. That's what I thought. That's what I was trying yeah. to get to. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and you got a lot of uh, uh, edges around these different colors. 
So how did you get these, how, why did you choose these particular colors to go with? Oh, and I picked the colors because of the green. So I went in, in, the, in the box and I clicked on, on, on more and I went and picked the color to match the color of the background. Okay, all right, there. so I was just trying to see how you got there. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, questions to Felix regarding his image. Is this with your cell phone again? Is this cell phone photography? That's the cell phone. Okay, all right, still doing a pretty good job in terms of image capture for you. Okay, all right, questions to Felix regarding his image. I think he's hit all the other buttons that we needed to cover. Where I got a question. Okay, there's a question there coming up for you. Who's that, Cal? It almost looks like you were trying to do monochrome there. Uh, yeah, uh, I kinda, monochrome. I, yeah, I kind of got that feel myself. Uh, I thought he was going for monochromatic as well. So, mm -hmm. and you I, possibly you possibly could have put it. In the I could have. Yeah, you possibly could have because everything's kind of a greenish texture. Yeah, I did it. I did it at first, and I turned it black and white, okay. and uh, I didn't get as much out of it in black and white. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, the, the the other thing too is that the the green background take away the the plant that the flower that's supposed to be jumping at you. Okay, all right. That's a, now that could be a matter of opinion. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <All right>. I, <laughs> I, I think make trouble, when, huh, Barrington. <laughs> when I just look at the picture. Hmm? It seems like the green borders are a brighter green than the greens in the picture. And it well, may be because- That's as close as I can get. Yeah, but that, that may be because they're up against white, but I think yeah. I would tone them down. Cause when I just glance, my eyes can't help but just go right to the border. Yeah, you see that for us, yeah. There's a way when you're using the color picker or the color palette, you can actually yeah. match that color if you want. Uh, there's a color picker in there. You can match that, and it will give you the exact color, But you, if you're looking for the exact color. And That's where I was trying to get an exact color. Yeah, okay. So you, when you were in, in this border thing or image or canvas size, mm -hmm. there's a drop down that says more color. So you want to yeah. that. Yeah, but the other way to do that is to use that color picker. Use the color picker? Yeah, which is outside of that, and it'll give you the exact match that you're looking for. Okay. Okay, RB's got her hand up. RB? Yeah, I just wanted to suggest, as Cynthia had indicated, as to why she did not put the borders that she typically puts around her folder, that Felix might consider not putting as many of those colors. I feel the, the second one from the black, black and then yeah. they have been eliminated and not have been as distracted as it is to me. It grabs me right away, the, the, the border. The All right, border. I know what to do. I can fix that. Thank yeah, you. Okay. but otherwise, Felix, it really is a very pretty picture. You're doing well with that camera and I'm following your tracks to an extent. Not all the way. <laughs> okay, I all agree. Right. Uh, general for, for composition, the largest, the brightest, sharpest, typically grabs your eye first. And in this case, uh, this this kind of a green around it is is actually the brightest thing in the frame, other than okay. the white. Other than the white. So. Yeah, you might consider making the flower a little wider too. Yeah, you could do that. Make stand out a little more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, overall, it's just a little bit busy. It's just a lot of stuff going on, and the eyes just run, my eyes are just running all over the frame. Uh, yeah. Look at it. But uh, interesting capture, interesting piece of creativity. We all think a little bit differently. So do your thing. So, uh, other questions before we go on to the next one here? Yeah, let's go to the next one. Here we go. And this is from Flo. And uh, Flo's got Surrealist Photography. Now, you had a couple of these. You had the base image, and then you had the create uh, the image that you finished with. So. Mm -hmm. uh, this is kind of like the before and this is the after. And I thought this was fairly interesting. So Flo, if you'll take it away, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you included the uh, the primary, the original image so we can see where you moved from to, so to speak. It uh, has a very nice painterly effect. So you want to talk about it, theme, take, make, create, rule, and title. Flo, you here? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Um, so I said surrealist photography titled Blazing Sea, okay. rule, color combination, color combination, basically. Okay. Uh, it's a create 
on the original one, I had to do lots of cleanup. On the create, once I started with that, I did, uh, I changed the hue. I went to image and adjustments, image, and changed the, changed the hue to the colors that are in there now. Okay. I did filter, distort, and pinch. Okay, so you just uh, <laughs> are actually doing some very creative work. This is an interesting piece All of right. I, I really like it uh, from just from what it is, just from the creative <laughs> aspect of it. So and that little red line going through was further down toward the boat, which made too much space in that yellow area. So yeah. I used the content aware move tool and move and moved it up and that was kind of interesting that it actually moved up yeah there is a i like that content aware move tool as well it's uh it's a good tool to know how to use but it doesn't work on everything but the areas mm -hmm. that when it does work it works works perfect uh but it's an interesting piece of art this is one that you would i, I would add to a portfolio piece okay uh, and uh yeah for it's a good image, nice image. I mean, I love nice it. Very nice. Is that considered abstract? Uh, like that? She's calling it surrealist and, and surrealist. Surreal. Surrealist, okay. I mean, could could it be considered abstract? I wasn't sure. I don't know about abstract so much. I would probably stick with surreal. I mean, you can call photography basically anything you want to call it, mm -hmm. but uh, surrealist kind of makes more sense to me. Okay. Because this looks like it's on a boiling lava pit to me. This boat is sailing across that. That's a very surreal scene without the boat running up. And this look, does look like a sun. I got birds, uh, but and uh, but uh, and the sky is not normally yellow. No. Uh, and I added birds because I think there were just two birds in the original. And then I changed the orientation of the birds so they wouldn't all be looking the same. The size a little bit too. Use yeah. it. I think the content aware move tool again. Yeah, this is a very nice piece of work. I mean, like I said, coming from where you came from to to this piece here. Uh, yeah, I, I think I, I think it's a portfolio piece. Okay, thank you very much. That's yeah, a nice piece of work. A lot uh, of talent. Other questions to, to Flo regarding it? Good job. <laughs> yeah, it's not a question, more of a comment. Yeah. When I look at the original picture, mm -hmm. nothing wrong with it, but it's, you know, a relatively mundane picture. Mm -hmm. The fact that you saw that, what you saw, what you made it into from that picture is very impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I right, go yeah. ahead. I mean, I just started tweaking on it. And I wonder, could I have made the other one look a little more alive? The, the, uh, the original. Face image? Mm hmm. Yeah, not, I mean, you could have done some things with contrast and dehazing and stuff like that. Uh, but there's, I mean, there's pretty much pretty close to what it, I guess it's pretty close to what it would have been to start with. Yeah. But there's a contrast you could have picked up a little bit, but but nothing like this. And this is, this is nice. Yeah, that's. Never is. From that to this is is fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's just a, change the hue and just do start doing stuff. That, that's a boat on fire. They're looking for water. <laughs> okay. That is somewhat surreal looking as well. All right, uh, let's move on to the next image. This is in from. This is from. Let's see. Do I have is? No, no. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't have a uh, cover sheet for this. Okay. Yeah. Do you like it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not, this is not about whether I like it or not. This is well, I mean, it's a nice image. I like what's going. Oh, okay, on. then I did it. Okay, <laughs> but I just want to know who did it so they can take us through it. Yeah, <laughs> so, what's the, it's a beautiful flower. What's this? yeah? Now, Jose, is this really you, or are you just <laughs> pulling our leg? No, no. There, I, I, oh, did. I did it. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's what that's what it is because it came from a color to, to a black and white. Uh, a boo. A real owner of this picture, please stand. Uh, up. I did it too. <laughs> it's All right. This, is a, this obviously is a class picture. Yeah, it's a nice image. Nice cap. I love Very it. Nice. What yeah, I was what I did was I went through old pictures. Yeah. And I found one that I had rejected. Ah, there you go. You know, and, and then I decided so many pictures are just probably started out average and editing really changes, makes the pictures. Yeah, true. Yeah. So I decided to see if I could take 
I wouldn't say a bad, but another an average Monday picture and make it look at least presentable, you know, and not a great work of art, <coughs> but make it decent to look at. Yeah. And I, I layered three different filters from uh, the Nick collection. The Nick collection and uh, what is it? Colors. Color effects. And color effects four. Color effects four. Yeah, I think that's a new one. Yeah. Yeah, and because I had the sun coming from behind, and that's the parts of the flower that are lit up. The sun is doing that. That's translucent here. Yeah. And it didn't show up right in the original picture. But after I layered the filters on it, and you know, I, I the part where the flowers the one that's kind of at an angle yeah. your, to your right. The one on the right. Yeah, there was a bunch of distracting dark stuff behind it. And so I blurred that to, mm -hmm. you know, not so distracting. And this, this is why I come up. It was just an experiment to see if I could take a crappy picture and make it better. It's, it's an interesting experiment. I think Good you job. Nice job of uh, going back. Very nice. That's what I've been mentioning over the last few weeks. You can go back. I mean, as you progress in your skill set, you can go back and look at some of your older images and there's things you can do to them to make them a bit more presentable, if you like. Uh, uh, it's a nice cap. I mean, I like, and I love the grunge border. This is something you find, I think this is in silver effects here, uh, the grunge border, how you get those around it as well. Uh, but taking not uh, being creative and coming up with something that's basically presentable. So what's your theme on it? Um, flowers. Now, okay, theme is in the flowers, but now this also could probably fall in just real bucket as well. But if you want to call it flowers, that works as well. So take, make, or create is obvious as a create. Is there a rule that you're employing or employing or have you used for it? Uh, uh, I'm used Barrington's flower rule. What was that? <laughs> uh, yeah, that you know the one where just call it what you want. That, that's that's a chameleon. That, <laughs> I never seen a white chameleon. Okay, let's, okay. let's, yeah. let's call it rule of thirds if you want to do that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, I have a camellia tree in my front yard. Uh, mm -hmm. If anyone yeah. cares, it's camellia susquehanna. Okay, all mm -hmm. right. All right, next cap, nice piece of work. That's a very How did you get it so white, Jose? Very creative pieces of work. They're, they're, they're white flowers, but like I said, I have uh, three different filters that are like, if you go into that program, if you have the, the Nick name. collection, yeah, they have, when you bring it up, there's all these like presets on the, the presets. side. Yeah. If you click on, if you go back to the right at the bottom, it has you, each one of those is considered a filter. And at the bottom of the thing on the left, it has as you change, you go from filter to filter, the picture changes with each filter. Then it has add filter, and you can lay one filter on top of another. Uh, that, that sounds like uh, analog, three filters. Analog, oh, okay. analog or color effects is what it sounds like. Um, I have to check that out. Okay, very nice. Okay, other questions to Jose? What time is it? So, Good yeah. job, Jose. I, I do. Good job. Good job. Yeah, well, like uh, when, when does that tree bloom again? It'll bloom one time a year. Twice a year. Let uh, us know when it's blooming again. Okay, I will. Very good. All right, it's about 150. Let's go ahead and take a break and come back in about 10 minutes. We'll we'll kind of go from there. Almost stop this year at this point. So but, uh, that was a rush of creativity we've had in the last couple of minutes or so. So it's uh, <laughs> one, two, three. We'll pick up where we left off. I'm going to share screen and uh, and which little button we do there. And I think uh, next up is Leon. Uh, Mr. Guy, are you out there somewhere? Leon, you here? Is Leon, Leon, Leon? Leon, you I'm here. 
Okay, I thought you fell asleep your mic is open. So, I did. Okay. A lot of yellow. Okay. All right. Uh, a lot of bright colors here. Uh, thing obvious is flowers. So just take, make, create. What's your rule and what's your title? You can tell us a little my, bit. My theme was flower photography. Okay. All right. My title was pretty yellow flower. Okay. That'll work. Created. Okay. I had to create the uh, blue background. Okay. Some of the other colors in the flower. Okay. All right. So, and uh, and you you call the title, you call the theme, rule, and the rule on it. What are you using from those standpoint? Uh, number fourteen, particular color combinations works as well. Okay. Wow. And a rule of thirds. I uh, wouldn't use rule of thirds. You got to almost get center. So, uh, particular color combinations is work. And when you said that the blue and the yellow, they, if you look at the color wheel, they actually play well together, the blue and the yellows. I think uh, Michigan uses those colors as well in their, on their football team, blue and yellow. But it's very nice, uh, very nice capture. So uh, now how did you create the background? You said you had to do some work. Well, it was, it was a filter okay. I had with uh, Photoshop Elements 2022. Okay. Right. The original color of the background was yellow, okay. so when I I uh, I want I wanted to change it, yeah. And uh, when I did, it also gave me more bokeh at the bottom. Okay, all right. This area here, this this I feel like made a little bit of bokeh here on the bottoms. So I see. You know, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so what else can you tell us about? It's very very night nice, very bright color. Well, mm -hmm. well. Uh, I saw this. I saw this flower by accident. I was driving along, and I had a doctor's appointment. And uh, as I entered the complex, the flower was right there uh, near the street. So I knew once I left the doctor's office that I would come back and shoot it. Okay. So I had pulled over one of the uh, exit lanes. I put the car flashes on. And I just, uh, you know, put my camera together. Uh, I use my uh, Canon EOS Rebel. I use a 85 millimeter 1.8 lens. Yep, nice lens. F, F, F four and a half. My, um, I use it was one five hundredth of a second. My ISO was 200. Okay, all right, nice capture. Very nice. So, and then filter on the background. How, I like, um, I, I think I asked the question, but I don't know if I was listening when you gave the answer. But this blue in the background, how'd you get that? What was, I'm sorry, my question is what color was the original background? The, the original color in the background was right. yellow. And I thought I didn't want the background to conflict with the yellow in the flower. Okay, I would be the same there. All right, nice, bit, uh, nice, uh, uh, let's putting it together all together. Now this is a uh, blue frame. This is uh, and this is your yellow, which would typically be your white mat. Is that what this would be? Uh, yes, I wanted to uh, have uh, the yellow matching the flower, and I wanted the blue matching the blue background. But I didn't want to overdo it, so okay. I thought after I looked at it, it was just me personally. I thought it was a real nice uh, balance. Okay, all right. Uh, try, try uh, and this is just an experiment, with, but when you get a minute, just try putting this on a sander, black frame, and a white mat uh, and see how that looks to you. Uh, again, nothing wrong with what you did. Uh, to me, it's a little, the flower is almost enough to stand alone. It doesn't need the extra attention, though, to speak of the blue frame and the yellow. Color. Just try putting it on a white mat and a black on a black frame around see what you got there. It's a very I, nice capture. Very strong. I did. You didn't like it? The color? The I, I, I didn't like it. One reason I didn't like it, it's too common. Oh, okay. All right. If you're going to call it common there. Okay. And I, want, I wanted to uh, I wanted to use something different. Okay. I mean, I like black and white, but yep. it's just it's just too common. Okay. All right. That's the standard. What I try to do is, like I said, give you the standard. You can take it in where you want to take it after that, as long as you know what the standard is. <clears throat> it's like uh, 
a place setting on a table. You set it up a particular way. If you decide you want to do it something different, I've seen people do it and put the fork at the top and the spoon on them one side and the other thing on the other side. But your standard, your standard setting will be the place setting on one side with your knife, fork, and spoon and what have you. So, but again, in terms of being creative, uh, that's totally up to you in terms of doing that. But I'm just kind of offering up uh, what might be uh, uh, referred. Uh, it, it just, it kind of overwhelms me, the color in terms of all the, the uh, yellow and the blue on the images there. Just kind of, because the flower is strong enough to stand on its own, especially with the blue background. It's strong yeah. to stand on its own. So, but it's a nice capture. And again, uh, from an artistic standpoint, uh, you're able to do whatever you want to do from an artistic standpoint. Uh, but nice capture. So you're getting away from the architectural stuff that you were doing. And like I say, <laughs> we no. Were, we no. know be shooting people. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not getting away from it. But um, you made a statement either last week or week before last. Yep. Yeah. And there are a lot of uh, themes that you can choose from. Yeah. Sure. I think it's what up to eighteen now, maybe twenty. Yeah, something so like that. So I wanted to venture off into flowers because I found it when you shoot a flower is really relaxing you know okay. all right for me there's, yeah there's some therapy in flowers and nature. yeah it's, a, it's some therapy involved but uh the few photos that i have taken within the past weeks of flowers i found it very relaxing and eases your mind and it's just something else but the architectural structures oh no okay. uh, like they say the best is yet to come Okay, all right, we'll hang in there. For you. Uh, questions of Leon regarding his image, for anybody? For Pretty anyone? good job, Leon. Very Thanks. nice, Chris. I, I, I see. I see that I'm having a lot of company now going into the flower department. I've been in there all my life. Okay. Yes, you are. We right. thought we would join forces. <laughs> yes, we would be your allies. It's all a right. lot of fun. All right, so may the force be with you. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> All right, Michael Stewart, you're up. Michael, are you here? So I am here at the bat. Okay. Oops, I didn't mean to make bring you up that. There you go. Okay, here we go. All right. Uh, As uh, usual, I know that's Michael. Yeah. This is a um, urban uh, photography, some make. Don't It's a panoramic. Too. It's a panoramic ACR. Um, Done with a 50 millimeter prime lens, 1.8 prime lens. Uh, it's actually off the west west side belt line on the murals that they have in there. They have a lot of sculpture in the, on that side of the belt line. And this is one of the murals there. I came back and looked for the artist and the artist entitled this Coexistence. So I kind of stuck with what he entitled it. And I was going for the as my rule, the center, center of composition and sym symmetry. Uh, what do you think? I was kind of going that way. Split them right between the two ladies, right, right in the middle. Yeah, not quite, because you got more to the yeah, left. But I, yeah, I, if that didn't work, if you said not quite, I was going to go from left to right. But yeah, I would probably do a little thirds on one of these, because you got you, you got to do a, a rule at all. Uh, I would probably do rule of thirds. Now the image had been set up as as, uh, as symmetrical uh, from uh, the way it was set up. Now this yeah. is another artist's piece of work, so to speak. Uh, right. So I don't know if you were you're not dead center. Had you been dead center, it could have been center composition and symmetry. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought as much, but yeah, but this is our. I thought I'm trying to pull one over here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Don't do that, Michael. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. So now, but uh, you know, my, now what about this makes it a make? You mentioned that it was a make. Did you um, I used, um, I took off some graffiti on the left hand side. I did uh, the Lightroom gradient because it was blown out on the right hand side because it was underneath the bridge and the sun was hitting the right side and kind of blew it out. So I used the masking to um, bring okay. it, make it more vibrant in color. So okay. that's the reason I thought about make. Yeah, I see where you are. Okay, because I thought maybe you just captured what was there. Uh, no, it was it was like when you had the point, and there was graffiti on that side. People just can't leave stuff alone, so I had to take that out. You're doing some cleanup. Uh, definitely doing yeah. some. Okay, 
I'm with you on that. Now, this being another artist's work, are you? Uh, is it okay to? I mean, I don't see any taglines on it. Would the artist have their name on it or anything like that? No, I didn't. I didn't put a tagline on it because it was somebody else. Was the else. artist was the artist tagline there? Yeah, that, it was. It was on that side, but it, you really couldn't see it because it's this wall was kind of deteriorating, so it's kind of grimy toward the right hand side. Okay. All right, you're getting real close to copyright infringement. Uh, they got to catch can't... me first. Uh, <laughs> believe me, they'll run you down, but, but, <laughs> but you're getting real close to that. I was saying, uh, I mean, you found the image and you just took a picture of it. Had you stuck something in it uh, that would be maybe a figure, maybe you or something in the corner? Uh, actually, I could, I could track down the artist. I know the name of the artist because I looked at it on, online, so I can, I can actually add it to it. Okay, yeah, but it's not a big deal. I mean, it's uh, but just be aware that when you take a picture of someone else's work uh, and you don't credit them for it, and you're running the risk of copyright infringement there. Uh, but it's this cat blocked out of a panorama. You mentioned something about a, uh, a extreme winding, a 14 millimeter lens, you say, 1 8, 14, 1.8. Was that the lens you mentioned? Something, uh, like yeah, it was, a, it was a nifty 50 1.8, so it's a prime okay. lens. Oh, okay. I did it in portrait. Portrait um, orientation. Uh, yeah, orientation. Okay. And when I, when I think about this, Bob, is that my poor little outdated um, PC laptop, yeah. because I think I did five slices of this yeah. and they were bracketed. So it was like 15 shots. Okay. It was a huge file. So it took forever to do anything, to run it through Viveza, to run it through. I mean, to take it, I actually went to bed and just to, to shin it over to. Viveza, so I could do it the next morning. Yeah, okay, I got you. All right, then. Uh, but this piece of world next capture again. Uh, so I think Ramona's got her hand up. Ramona, we got. Well, I'm just curious about the copyright bit. That work is along that whole belt line for public view. People use it for backgrounds when they're taking photos right. and stuff. So would that fall under a copyright problem? The issue with copyright is anytime an artist creates something, uh, copyright law basically states that that artist is, is the only person who has the right to uh, photograph it or, or recreate it. If, uh, if he were offering this up for sale, for example, uh, he might run into a problem because the artist would have to consent to him doing that. He could probably run into an issue there. But when you take a picture of somebody else's original piece of art, you have to be very careful. There's a loophole that says, uh, if you use it for educational purposes, and we could call this educational purposes, then it's okay to do so. Uh, but I'm just always leery about taking pictures of uh, other folks' work, so to speak. Uh, so that's kind of how it falls in there. We've got something out there in the team room I put in there about copyright issues there. Uh, but you can't claim this as your own. Uh, you can't say this is my photograph because it's actually not. It's just a photograph of somebody else's piece of artwork that you took a picture of. Uh, and it is, and it comes, this comes up occasionally, but I'm just uh, uh, just fair warning that uh, if it were being uh, held up as your work or being held up for commercial mm -hmm. work, commercial mm -hmm. work could run into an issue with it. So now it's just, it's just my duty as an instructor to say, yeah, you look. Well, that's fine. That's fine. But I was just curious because that's such a public place and it's there for everybody to see and use for background. Yeah. And was there, did he say there was, there was not a copyright on it? He said there was a tagline on it. The artist oh, okay. Said, yeah, All right. Okay. I always, I, I always point back to the case. There was a, and this is a major case that kind of tied of this. I think it was BMW, a uh, major manufacturer, major producer of uh, exotic cars, did an ad where they were driving some of their vehicles through an area of Detroit, I think it was. And uh, that particular area had lots of uh, Coca-Cola signs or some other, or some other um corporation had signage that they created for that area. And they did not ask that group of whether it was Coca-Cola or whomever <laughs> they could they use their sign in the background, although it was BMW's car. They filed a lawsuit and uh, I guess BMW and won uh, and won the lawsuit because they did not uh, right to use their images in their photograph. So this is a very uh, sticky situation, a very iffy situation. I guess it depends on how the judge feels that day as well. But again, I just kind of bring it up just to be aware of that, if you will. Okay. Mom, I have a, uh, I had another shot. It was a sculpture that was on the belt line that, um, uh, I was going to take it, but I have it. But I was actually going to do something surreal to it, 
So it probably won't look like what I recently took, but it still needs to be similar to what I what I've seen uh, the picture I took. Yeah. But I still have to put a tagline on there for the artist. Now, if you go go through there and do something where you make it your photograph. Uh, and you're not selling it if it's for educational purposes. Say, for an example, you go out and p- take a picture of, I'm just trying to think of some a piece of sculpture downtown Atlanta. You got a lot of freestanding sculpture there. And you decide to do something with the color and what have you. And I know that stuff there in, in uh, downtown Atlanta or any other public space, somebody created it. But if you do stuff with it and uh, make it a surrealist type of thing, put your copyright on it, that's fine. It's educational purposes. But if you try to sell that, then you're going to run it. You might run into it. Now, if the person never sees it, you never have an issue. But if you try to sell that, uh, then you might run into an issue because you're trying to use their work for commercial purposes. Although you doctored it up, look like something okay. else. So, uh, but it's just a fine line. You just have to kind of be aware of that when you. Just do gotta, it. I just got to hope that none of my classmates turn me in. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tune into YouTube and see one of our uh, one of our programs. <laughs> 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 it's so How much money you're offering to hold, keep our mouth quiet? All right, we, <laughs> we need to move on to Leah. <laughs> All right, Michael, nice piece of work. I mean, again, well, the fact you talk about cleaning it up and all this thing. Uh, what I'm hearing from you in the back of what we're going through all this conversation is that you're using tool. Uh, if this is all faded out and got some graffiti over here, you're using the tool. That's my concern is that you're able to use the tool. Uh, and that is Photoshop, or whatever tool you're using, but you're learning from it. So, uh, nice piece of work. Uh, and a couple good of work, them. Michael. Good work. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Go to the next one here. Let's see if I can oops, click that and go that. Go here. And I'll see more. Rhett is Rhett, are you here? This Rhett normally doesn't show up on Friday afternoon. I don't know what happens with her, but her piece of work comes up next, I believe. And she sent a note to use this and to use that. So I tried to include it, but I don't have it. This is a four. And uh, this is her after. And uh, I think she did a nice piece of work, but she put her before and after on there. Uh, of the end, but I only have her to explain it. So, but here's her work, and if one sees her, it talks to her. Oh, we just we come uh, flew by it. I used to work whatever she's doing now when she was here to talk about it. But I think there's some kind of issue with her for uh, not being able to be home Friday. And I don't see Sharon. She's been here a couple of days as well. So and this is her her image here. So and I won't get into the details of it since she's not here. We got a few more to cover. And let's go to the next. Wonder where that is. Uh, that's the rest oh, of the That's the rest of the That's the rest of the park. Park. Well, it's Oh, okay. Well, well Flo, there you go. You got six answers. Right. Thank you. I appreciate it. We all can answer at the same time. All right, Castle, you're up. I know you're here. I heard you earlier. Uh, <laughs> I am. Um, oh, get up. <laughs> <laughs> no, you heard me. Okay. Uh, I think this is your original image. Uh, that, that's the original. It was taken with um, a cell phone. And um, I just happened to look over and see that sunset. And, and the cell phone was all I had with me. So I, I took that image, but I wanted to do some work on it because I didn't particularly like the clouds in the top of it. And yeah. to me, your eye goes straight to that middle section with where the sunset is. Yep. So I'm... Yep. Um, I, you know, I had worked on that, but then I wanted to do something different to see what I, uh, what if, and as you say, we're here, what if, I wanted to see what if I, if I did something different. So okay. the second image is after this, I worked on it. This is a what if, okay. Yeah, there you go. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. From here, very nice. looks like a totally different photograph. Yep, much better. How did you get this uh, uh, detail to come into here? Uh, in the second photo right there, this is a sky replacement, perhaps. It's a it's a sky replacement that I actually blended to the point where it came down to that line of trees and all the way across, so that it appeared as it was naturally there. Oh, okay, all right, very nice. And then you got uh, kind of a painterly effect going on down here below. Though. That's what I wanted. I wanted it to look like a watercolor painting. It does, uh, and the sky looks looks realistic in the the watercolor kind of kicks in down here. That's a nice piece of work. 
So this is uh, very what nice. You, what's your theme on it? Um, the theme was, well, sunset on the other one, but the theme on this was travel and beach, beaches. Okay. The title, that's your title then, travel. No, my title was Blue Hawaii. Okay, and the theme is beaches. Okay, I got beaches. it. Okay, because yeah, that's one of our buckets. That's, uh, that's an extra piece of the bucket. Uh, mm -hmm. Take, make, create, obviously it's a create, but the work you've done on it. And for this one, what rule are you using? Um... I used leading lines and foreground interest in depth. Okay, I, I, I can buy the foreground interest in depth. I'm trying to see leading lines will you generally take you into the photograph. And the only lines I can see is this from this left, right hand side going down into the left. That was my, yeah, that was my leading line going down into that pier. Okay, so I would suggest using foreground interest in depth. Foreground interest in depth, okay. Now, I like the silhouetted figures on the right hand side. That's kind of cool because uh, uh, they kind of add to it. And that's kind of where my eye kind of goes as well. And uh, you've got your tagline here on the photograph. That actually works. It almost looks like a signature uh, as opposed to a copyright or a, a copyright uh, uh, line. That almost looks like a signature. Sometimes when artists will sign a painting and uh, right. really actually works there. And I'm usually opposed to that. But that's kind of a script type of a font. I'm talking about font. Mm -hmm. It is a script. script type of font there. Very nice. Very nice. Thank Good. you. Good job. Good job. Thank you, Felix. Anytime yeah. it's a cell phone, it's excellent. <laughs> cell phone, Felix, all the way. All the way. You have to get together to do a book on cell phones. Yeah, phone. now, Felix, <laughs> don't feel too lonely now. You have company. I know. Oh, that, I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to get a lot more company i've been doing that a while Philly, so i'm, right. I'm with you uh, me, too. me too all right so leah you're out and i'll let you walk through it this is uh leah this is our theme take make create rule and title okay the um the theme is vintage it's a okay. vintage sign the title is an old bottle cap um sign the sign on actually a big bottle cap on a door. Bottle oh, cap. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rule was fill the frame. Okay, that's a nice rule. And it was a create. Create. No, what oh, I'm makes sorry. It? I'm sorry. Not a create. It was a make. Okay. So and what's just, the difference? And it was col It was very colorful, rusty. The um, the back of the bottle cap was very rusty. Okay. But I liked it in black and white because you could see those little round nuggets up there. You couldn't see it until I changed it into black and white. What little round nuggets? See above the uh, established 2017. See those little round? Those oh, little, little, okay. little, yeah, little bubbles. Yeah, they were kind of beat. I guess somebody beat the thing up. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it. Yeah, the bumps in the road. Yeah. Okay. All right, and I changed it in um, silver effects. Okay, and you, that's what the grunge border, what have you. This is right. this, yeah, it's just a take or make. This is leaning more towards a make. It's a make. Oh, okay, I thought you said uh, take, okay. I'm sorry, I meant make. Okay, now I'm not understanding the blue border. Why the blue border in a black and white image? I just thought the blue just, it was kind of dead color. <laughs> so I put the blue in there to make it colorful because I like blue. Okay, but you got a very strong black and white image, and the blue, in my mind, doesn't do anything for you. Uh, okay. Again, I would offer the same advice that I offered to Lynn. Try it in a white and a black frame. And that's a classic photograph, a uh, uh, vintage photograph. And it, it, I think it would look very well in just a black mat, black frame and a white mat. But just give it a shot and see what it looks like. The blue doesn't seem to support it. Uh, the image is, I mean, it's a strong enough image that it stands on its own. Uh, mm -hmm. And in and, and my eye, the blue just kind of takes away from it a little bit. But nice photograph. Nice photograph. Nice capture. And, well, uh, at least I'm just trying, I'm just shooting for sharp. So that's what I got here. I, <laughs> okay. I, got one I just need them to be sharp. Okay. I think you mentioned it's very sharp. Yeah. Very Thank sharp. You. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. You, uh, you, nice. you have created an animal. <laughs> I, I know, right? I shot this at the um, peach blossom in Macon. Yeah. Is it peach? Is it peach blossom festival or whatever it is? Blossom. I think oh, it's cherry blossom. Cherry blossom. Cherry blossom, yeah. cherry yeah. blossom festival. Yeah. 
Yeah, but it does make for nice black and white, and it does fall on the on the on the uh, theme of vintage. All right, moving to the next one here. Let's see. What we got. This is from Theodore, Mr. Sloan. You're up. Let's Mr. See. Sloan. Uh, Mr. Sloan. Okay. Ah. Wow. What you call us in Porterdale? Uh, yep, you're correct. The, yeah. The loft. Yeah. 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 So that's. Uh, this see, is the, what's your thing? What's, what? what's your thing first? Theme? Um, reflection. Okay, and uh, reflect it. Okay, and, yeah. And and the title is just reflecting. Just re well, that's the title. Just reflect. <laughs> <Like, take, laughs> but um, I shot in HDR. Okay. I stacked it. And I also I uh, did it in panorama. Okay. So it's uh, about, about all right. segments there. Yeah. Why did you stack it? Oh. Uh, Okay. I just I like doing that. It, I think it brings out more clarity to the like the bricks, okay. And so, and, and the building itself, it, it never fades away. Now that you know how long that building is, yeah. But looking at it, you know, the windows to the left is the same as the ones to the right, yeah. And even the column, you know, you know. So everything, okay. the buildings, is clear. Um, you know, all the way through. So I, I like that part of it. And then I stack the um, the reflection okay, to bring so out as much as I could. Right, let me just be sure I understand how you, what you did. Cause I mean, a good photograph. So you yeah. stacked it. So where's your first, how many stacks were, were there? All right, well, I, you sitting down because this is a big one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sitting down. <laughs> the total number of uh, pictures was 363. Oh, good Lord. It's a hundred oh. and, um, 121 um, HDR pictures, and um, and I sent it through. Um, you know, in Lightroom they have HDR pan, um, panorama, and I've used it before. And it's pretty yeah. good, but this very was good. Just, but this was just too much. So what I did is I just took that 121 pictures and just brought them all into um, okay uh, uh, Photoshop and like Michael. I you know I just sent it through and and then the next day I just checked and said okay you're finished. You know? <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. All right, yeah, <laughs> a lot of questions out there on this one, but go ahead. <laughs> Leah, you go ahead first if you will. Am I go first? Right. Leah, yeah, you're up. Teddy, I have a question now. You see those little three windows there by the chim the chimney and the reflection? Where are they up there? Does that little section up there look like trees? So you take your arrow up, bounce on ball, like that. They, they, those three pictures, things don't show. Right, correct. Because, all right, see, that's the other thing about this picture. Um, this is a reflection. There's a, a water drop off, about a three, four foot water drop off that and it goes into those rocks at the base of the building. Revolved, yeah, yeah. So we really the, the line with Bob's falling with the uh, his cursor, that is the waterfall. That's a so the reflection that it picked up of the building is you know was uh, yeah. yeah that I, is I see what you're perfect. saying. Here's the actual waterfall. It starts right about here and goes along. Yeah, the goes all the way across. Yeah, exactly. I see. And, I see you. And there's a yeah. of water down here below it. Right. And so at the base where, where you're talking about Talia, there's yeah. actually running water from that waterfall. So that's the reason you didn't get the same type of reflection. But the, that's what I was playing with. I went out there two days. Uh, where set, where oh, is that? <laughs> this is at that quarter. You know where it's at. I shot this it from the bridge. Port of Hill, Georgia. Huh? Yeah, Port of Hill. It's off of I-20. So about three miles outside of Atlanta. Who asked? Was it? I thought Talia was asking where it was at. I think it was. No. Uh, oh, that's okay, yeah. That's it's Portadale. Yeah, Portadale. But um, I just thought that when you put the whole thing together, the panorama stacking, HDR, you got the um, waterfall that's perpendicular to the building. So it breaks the reflection, you know, at the base in the middle. I just thought all that was interesting. Yeah, oh, the way you laid it out, it, it is interesting as well. Yes. Okay. Now, what I what I questioned was a stack. Why did you have to stack that? Couldn't you get this with depth of field? Uh, yeah, I shot f eleven, but um, I I uh, I just felt 
more comfortable with the um the, the stacking part of it. Yeah, yeah, and I can see the stack. That's why I've zoomed it in up here. Yeah, it's soft up in this edge here. But I, I, that's why I zoomed it in to see if we could it was uh, if it was uh, uh, indicating stack. That's uh, an artifact, and it does indicate stack just in that area there. Yeah. See that. Yeah, but nice cap, man. It's a nice piece of work. Okay, so then up there, the top. Um, oh, Eddie, you know, what, what, let me ask you a question. Where you say that is? Who's asked? A uh, Porterville, um, Georgia. Yes, Porterville, Lofts. Georgia. It's called yeah. Loft, Loft at Porterville. Let me ask a question. The um, the water, the water that's there. What could he have done in order for the sky to show in the water? See, so you have to. You show the reflection. Well, uh, yeah, well, well, Bob, I showed this to Bob earlier this week, and he made a valid um, suggest suggestion. I could have backed off a little bit to catch the sky oh. and mm. maybe a little bit more water. To, yeah, to more, uh, more yeah. ceiling and more floors were offered up to us. My mission was reflection, and so that's, you know, I was focused on the reflection, but in hindsight, you know, you know I could have backed off. But this is, um, I just got this lens. It's the, um, the RF 100 to, 400, 100 to 500. And, um, and I, you know, it's made specifically for a mirrorless camera. Yeah. And, um, and I, I was just playing with it to see, you know, just see what it would do. Yeah, it's a nice sharp image. Nice work, nice piece of work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was my question too, about the reflection of a sky that you don't see in the water that you do see. Yeah. Same as this question. As, uh, long panorama, you just kind of crop the top and bottom of it off a little bit there. Yeah. But that was yeah. you know, the same thing I kind of offered up. Give me more ceiling and more floor so I can actually see the reflection. Of what yeah. You're but it's nice capture. Nice. Uh, so nice. nice image. It's got some nice, uh, some detail in it. Like I said, you go as you go deeper into it. Now, megapixel on that camera that you're using, what is that again? Because that's, uh, that's the uh, 20, uh, 20, 20 point pixels. Uh, 20, yeah, it's 20, right? 20.1 20 pixels? Yes. Yeah. 20, yeah. 20 yeah. megabyte, yeah. megabyte no, 20 megapixel. Yeah, so yes. I see plants. This guy's well. Who ever wanted to see There's some plants. Nobody was taking a shower because I would have got him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with that 500. <laughs> <laughs> Go to jail for peeping Tom. Right? <laughs> I thought I had to look at what's, <laughs> what's, uh, what's this, the name uh, of the building, uh, Teddy? You know, this is, it used to be a mill uh, for cotton. You know, the, that whole town is interesting. Um, I spent the whole day Sunday uh, just driving around and, and, and looking at the history of Porterdale. And that was like the leading art of industry back in the early 60s, where the, the people that owned the mill, they had this these duplexes built and they rented to the employees and and baseball field and a, and a school and it was all funded not from the county but from the owners of the mill wow interesting yeah, yeah. I, can't better, I'm so a lot of trip. I gotta go there yeah yeah, yeah. it's it was yeah i thought it was really and then um they have uh, uh the, the this is the yellow river and, and they have two accesses that i found the one uh actually we went i went there to see this play and just down the road from the that building was an uh, access where people bring their kayaks and they play in the water. And then this further down the road is in the background, there's another, it's just an interesting town. And, you I, know. I'm, I'm going to, thank you very much. I'm going to take a trip. There you go. All right. Nice piece of work there. Uh, All right. Ask a question very about, nice. I like the photograph. I wanted to ask you a question about the bevel edge you got around it. It looks like it's got some kind of gradient. It's a great strike yeah. it looks like there's a gradient involved in that which makes it looks like it's recessed what yeah. how did you do, how did you do I, that i don't know that was by accident <laughs> <laughs> it's it's good, though. Though. i like it it yeah. does look recessed all right uh other questions before we move on we got a couple more pieces well well teddy nice since you, you, yeah. know, it is, you put you got everything in it yeah except the kitchen sink yeah that is not inside the building. That is, that is not a question, Mr. Barrington. Yeah. Right. Good job, Eddie. One last Thank thing. Um, Good job. Cynthia, I, I, Cynthia I thought about you in this picture because I said, now Cynthia would tell me to take that, 
that phone line or that cable. <laughs> I sure would. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't have Tell time. you to take yeah. that line out of that. <laughs> yes, indeed. That that's for sure. You can easily do that it. as we move on. All right, here we go. All, All right, right. <laughs> Theron, are you here this afternoon? <laughs> now we got. I think this he is. He went to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Hello, everyone. All right, there we go. Oh, let me back up. That would be the last one. Let me make this small. I don't think so. Lord, there we go. Okay, we're back in here now. All right, uh, TR, how you doing? Doing good, y'all. I'm okay. Yeah, we're. I guess we're all okay. Uh, is this you on the beach here? As no, I'm afraid not. I can't. I, 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 I'm afraid not, Bob. That was uh, somebody I didn't know. Uh, just caught my eye and I took the picture. All right, then. All right. So your theme, take, make, it's, create. It's beaches is beach. Okay, beaches. Okay, that's one of our theme in the bucket. Uh, take, make, create. A create and I tile the evening at the beach. Evening at the beach is a tile. And then what's yeah. the rule that you're using? I, I'll put uh, 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 foreground uh, inches. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that nails it. Four ground inches in depth there. That's our uh, it's Right. Nice. Now, Bob, actually, actually, I shot that around. Uh, I changed it up. Shot that around midday. And then, oh, yeah. so uh, I, I changed the uh, sky replacement. So I call it evening. Yeah, I know that sky there. I've seen that in the sky. Yeah. Yeah, I just changed that up with the up for evening. Got a little edge of the mountain there, which wasn't up there, but uh, yeah, that's that part of that sky replacement. Right, right. Uh -huh. yeah, and that's almost a perfect one for it. Yeah. Uh, and again, the, from a shadow standpoint, it does look like high noon. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I open her up a little, open that up a little bit. I'll first when I send I'm gonna try to shoot under under her like like a. Uh, 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 through her to the beach, but I said, no, I, I don't get that close to her. <laughs> okay, I got you. It probably wouldn't, wouldn't serve you well. I don't think she would object to that. Yeah, I probably wouldn't serve you well. A nice catch, nice, nice uh, use of this, a, a particular version of the sky yeah. to get it kind of like that yeah, glowy, glowy scene there and what have you. The one individual and the tent and everything, it matches up perfectly. Yeah. It worked well, worked well. Uh, it almost has a cinematic quality to it. You notice some of the movies that they do, or most of the movies they're doing nowadays, they will pick three, on, uh, uh, one, two, or three colors that they'll accentuate throughout the movie. And mm -hmm. this has that kind of an orange, blue, and beige type of color all the way through. It's only got three colors in it. Uh, mm -hmm. Blue and the beige. Nice mm -hmm. character, right? very nice. Good, nice. Bob. Yeah, all right, okay. All right, Matt's a little, uh, little uh, not quite wide enough for my taste, but it's still a, still a good piece of work there. I really, really, uh, they want the, the, the hill on, but they went, came, came with, with the sky paper, so I mean the, the mountains, but it came with sky paper, so I, 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 I just fell for it. Yeah, it looks good. It looks good. I mean, it kind of drops off into the haze there, and it makes it look like an exotic place, maybe the West Coast or East Coast. Maybe the West Coast, I guess you might say. Right. Uh, Cause I don't know if we got that kind of mountain range on this side of the country, but uh, I kind of get kind of a California feel from it. it I look concerned, you know, how, to, how to, the mountain did mess with the skyline, you know, I want to keep that straight. Yeah, yeah, but it's nice. It is nice and straight there. It's, nice it's like something you always say, Bob, it's wherever you want it to be. That's right, you got it, yeah. Nice piece of work there. All right, I think that's all of it. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think there's. I don't think there's anything. Else. Nope. Yeah, we're back around to the back end of it there. All right. So let me stop the chair, and then get back into the classroom so I can see everybody's smiling face. <laughs> I'll see many of those nowadays. Everybody's hiding behind the avatar and what have you. That's right. right. That's all we got. That's all the homework. And it worked out just right. We had a chance to kind of go through the work and uh, kind of spend some time on each person's work. Uh, what I see from the homework, and this is uh, and what this pleases me, if you would, if I have a right to be pleased, but uh, the, uh, that you're learning how to do different stuff. We could do any of this a year ago, uh, but you're learning new tips, you're learning new techniques, you try trying out the software, and uh, it keeps you mentally uh, agile, so to speak. So that works out for me. I'm glad we're doing it. Uh, but the skill set is just going, going in leaps and bounds. And that's what I think we'll continue trying to do. So well, but with that said, that's basically all I have. So anybody well, else? With, got your tut with your tutelage, I think we all would be very, very good photographers someday. Yeah, you'll think you're very good at this point nowadays. <laughs> and, I, yeah, and I'm not as much of a <laughs> Well, tutelage. 
<laughs> used to be. But uh, uh, I'm enjoying the work that you're doing a lot.